Hello, my, my name's Neil Marshall. I've, um, we're doing a s short video uh, about composting. We'll show you a bit of what we do and um, give you some tips, I hope, for your own composting. Com compost making. So we, we, we have quite a lot of green waste coming out of our greenhouses and um, we tend to create big heaps of it like the one behind me. At the end of the day what we're looking for is a, a product like this to put in, in, our, in our crop, you know, put down ahead of planting our crops or even in amongst it. How do we get from that to, to there? The, um, in, in, in a garden setting you might, um, there, there are various different ways of doing this. Um, it is recommended that you have um, some kind of receptacle. It could be made out of pallets like these or a, a wire cage. Um, I think ideally it would be good to have two or three and then you could be filling one, letting one sit and then using the third one in a sort of three year cycle possibly. Um, there are two types of main types of compost that you can make. One is made um, hot and the other one is made cold. The cold one it, you add slowly to over time and the it doesn't create much heat. Um, whereas the hot one you, you, you're going to fill your hot one all in one go and it will build up a, 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 over a period of a week you'll get a lot of heat in there. That, that will need turning a couple of times and um, to, to make sure all the, the edges get into the, the middle and get the heat. The hot way of making compost creates a, a, a good temperature. There's a lot of activity in there. The, the bacteria actually are causing the temperature rise. Um, and it will go up to about 65 degrees, which is really quite hot. And it's a, <clears throat> a hot enough to kill most weed seeds and kill off pathogens and, and, and any bad things that are in the, in, in the material that you put there. We can even put cooch grass and things into hot compost because it will get broken down. Um, it, it's um, very easy then to use it on your beds knowing that you're not adding weeds or, or disease. The cold system takes a longer period of time. I, I mean to say the, the hot system only can, can be done in as, as little as six weeks. Um, the, the cold system you want to leave it in a clamp for a year, a year and a half to break, break down like to, 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 to this level. Um, the cold system's more convenient in a way because you just, as you, as you get, gather material, you just add it to your heap and fill your heap up to, till it's properly full and then close that one off and then start a new one. Um, and then you've got to leave it there for quite a long time. It never builds up heat, so um, although you left over time your, your pathogens should um, die away, you, you, you might still have weed seeds within it, but it's still a very good usable material. I, I think of compost as uh, breeding the life in a soil um, in a concentrated form. Um, compost is full of bacteria and fungal growths which are really beneficial and really essential to growing. Um, uh, not enough attention is given to those, uh, um, th th this life within the soil. Um, and w when you apply uh, compost to your, your ground, you're actually um, applying a, a culture of living things to your ground which is beneficial to all your plants and will do most of your work for you if you do it right. Making compost. Now, it's not, it's not really all that complicated. I was uh, um, told that I needed to create layers. Um, and now, it, it, it just helps you think about the different constituents that make a good compost. Um, you, you need um, 
approximately a third of brown material, a, th a third of green material, and then some uh, a, a, a bit of soil as well is, is always good, or a bit of old compost. Um, the uh, brown material could be leaves, um, le autumn leaves, or some old branches and twigs and things. Um, not nothing too big, but um, you need you need quite a lot of that. Paper, paper's good. Um, pa paper that hasn't got chemicals on it. Um, and then your green material is all your your. Well, it could be grass clippings as well, but it um, all 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 the weeds and uh, trimmings from your crops. Um, you, you you build up the layers so you get a, a, the brown layer at the bottom, and then then a, a, the the green layer, and then a soil layer. Uh, you you can put put other layers in between. Maybe separate the two layers with a bit of soil, put and put soil on top. Um, that, that's that's one suggested way of doing it. You, you can just add the mixture of those, but bear in mind that uh, at the end that balance is quite a good balance to have. Um, clay is always good to add as, as part of your soil mix. Uh, there's a relationship between cl clay and compost that help a lot of nutrients um, become attached so uh, you know when you're trying to build up your nutrient base in your soils clay is always helpful. On a garden scale you, you might have as I said the, pa the, the pallet units I've seen a really good one where it's you have three sections three or four sections and you, you, you're, you're moving them all, all to one in one direction so you, you you're filling the first one and when that's full you, you move it to the second one and then let it sit and then to turn it again you move it to the third one and then let it sit again and then finally move it to the, to the fourth one if you need if you if you've got a fourth one and and that way it gets turned properly um that's that i think that's a good system um on our scale we we have to to do composting on a much bigger scale um, and we we weren't able to layer our compost we initially we used to get it delivered by the council and um, we'd get 10 to 20 tons at a time this required machinery to, to, to shred it first and then turn it we had big windrows in, in the greenhouses sort of um, big piles, long piles of compost running the whole length of, of, a, of a greenhouse and a, a turning machine that straddled it and turned the material so the outside edges all had a turn of going into the middle. As all the material arrived in one go it was all of an age so it created heat um, and it, it went way above 60 degrees which isn't always um, ideal. It took a six week period to turn this into compost, which um, was very quick. Um, and then, then we had to use it, of course. And we, this, um, we produced an awful lot of it and we were using, an, we, we were using it uh, uh, quite thickly on our beds. In, the, in an area this size, we have um, quite, it's fairly intensive, it's under, Glasshouse conditions, it, it intensive to, takes a new level. But um, so we aren't, we aren't intensive for glasshouses, but for most gardening, it, it's fairly intensive. And so we, we needed a lot of material. So this is how we dealt with it. Uh, this material I've been showing you, this compost, was a, a year ago. Was um, a pile of a big pile. It was in the greenhouse there, and had come out of the the, the sieve. Where, we had been sieving the compost to get the twigs out and this was just a pile of twigs and um, you know they're quite, quite big ones uh, pencil thickness and, and more and um, they it was as dry as anything it would have been a good fuel I think um, but you know to burn it but but we, we 
brought it out here and it's been been in this heap um, for, for, for a year and it's turned into very good compost quite surprising surprisingly good Gro growing with grace grows with a system that doesn't involve um, animal byproducts so we don't use farmyard manures and we don't use chicken manures or uh, blood and bone meal which is used, commonly used as a fertilizer on organic farms um, we use we, we, we fo focus mainly on compost and green manures to create a nutrient base for our plants um, this this makes a, this we can call this a stock free system no animal products are used in in any of the additions we make to to our our soils or our plants um, this is uh, it, 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 in the current climate there, there's a, a lot of interest in veganic systems and this could be described as a veganic system we prefer to call it a stock free system but um, it, uh, we've been growing like that since we started out it, it came about initially because of the big supply of green waste that we were able to tap into the, the other problem for organic grower is that if I want to put farmyard manure on I need to find an organic farm from which to source that organic manure and really under an organic system that they, they should be using it themselves so that having a surplus doesn't make sense so much sense in a system where you're trying to be more self-sufficient